Morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over five mats that are always in demand. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so today we're going to be going over five mats that are always in demand or always seem to be in demand and are usually pretty damn good in the way of just farming up and just selling them on. These ones will not be Shadowlands specific, all Shadowlands farms will be taken out of this equation and that is because pretty much every Shadowlands material is selling relatively well at the moment and because it's current content they will be in very high demand or anyway so if you want to get an answer from that Shadowlands materials are in demand as of now these ones are other ones that are in demand as well and I'll tell you the reasoning behind that Aside from all of that, let's move into number one, which is Dreamleaf. Dreamleaf is a very common one that is used for quite a bit of materials and or professions. And what you can do is you can actually farm this up within the Dark Heart Thicket or in Val Shirar. Preferably the Dark Heart Thicket nets you with the most. So that is something you can do right there. If you are able to do the Dark Heart Thicket, and then just run in and do all of that. Recommended, I would use Dark Moon Fire Water for that as it speeds up your runs and also using a Druid for its dream walk ability. The reasoning behind choosing Dreamleaf for this actual one is for the profession inscription. This is because a lot of high value glyphs and ones that actually sell relatively fast like Glyph of the Sentinel, you are using roseate pigments and also the sallow pigments so that Dreamleaf is usually in high demand because it's one of the best ones to actually mill for a lot of those different types of pigments which sit, which sell for a very high value on the auction house. Aside from all of that, the best way I've found to actually do this is by farming up in the dark heart thicket, then milling them and then selling the pigments on. They usually sell a little bit slower than you would just by farming up the dream leaf and selling that on but you can usually get a very good return on your time for doing that and at this moment in time dream leaf seems to be slumping and the yes Sarah lion seeds actually increasing in price as well so that is something that you can actually pay attention on and you can have an overview within worth it which will give you an overall gold per hour for your server and so from all of that this is a great farming location so that being the case let's move on to number two which is pyrite ore now pyrite ore is very good and steady seller in the grand scheme of things the best zone for actually farming this up is Aldham, and throughout an hour's worth of farming you're going to get quite a decent amount of pyrite ore as well as elementium and some volatiles to actually go along with that the thing of note for this is that pyrite ore is used to actually make Vial of the Sands mount, which is in a, it, which is always in demand, and people sell that on for a lot of gold. I myself am a proprietor of selling Vial of the Sands, as it nets you with a very steady income in the grand scheme of things. But what you need is pyrite ore, and then turning those into pyrite bars. Usually I would do an hour's worth of farming of this in Aldham and then smelt the pyrite ore into pyrite bars. Usually they typically go for a lot more and then you just sell those on the auction house. But it can vary on your server so I'd double check before you even do that smelting. The other things of note that you do get along with this farm is obviously elementium ore and that can actually be used with an alchemist in order to actually turn into pyrium bars as well on a daily cooldown. This requires three elementium bars and one volatile earth, which we will get from that farm. Now, aside from all of this, this is a great farm in order to do, and quite prevalently, this is mainly for alchemists and also mining characters as well. This is for smelting on, for actually selling for a profit, and also using it for the Vial of the Sands mounts, which are the most prevalent ways of making gold with this particular farm. And this is why this material is always in demand. People are always searching for those types of materials in order to make the Vial of the Sands to sell on. I myself buy tons of this at a time. It just gets you a lot of gold when you actually do farm up those mats and sell those on. Now coming in at number three is volatiles. And this is like a grand scope of volatiles. Now, 
The volatiles of note that actually do sell relatively well are, is volatile water, fire, and life. These ones are quite heavily used and they have a very strong sell rate behind them. The, the best ways in order to farm these ones up are in the Twilight Highlands for water and fire. Those farms I've done in the past and they fetch you in a nice amount of gold. The best way to actually farm these up is by doing them in a five man group, but you can do them solo. That's only if you can't help it. Five man groups get you like three times the amount of the standard volatiles that you would get with a regular solo farm. So that is something you can bear in mind in the grand scheme of things. Now, overall with the volatile life, the best way to farm that up is by herbalism in cataclysm, and I usually find that the whiptail farm works out really well. If you are wanting to find all of those roots, they are within worth it, and all you need is worth it and the roots add on in order to import them and then use them. So that is basically what they're actually doing, and they actually sell really well, but to, to be quite frank, the, it's mainly used in alchemy once again for a wide variety of different things as well as Vile of the Sands as well. So that is something that I can actually attest to and they sell relatively well in the grand scheme of things as they're used quite heavily in alchemy. Now moving on to number four and that is Ghost Iron Ore. Now Ghost Iron Ore you probably wouldn't think would make it on this list but it's used in quite a lot of crafts. Now this can be for engineers and alchemy in general, and the best way to actually farm up Ghost Iron Ore is in the Valley of the Four Winds. Basically take the route on the screen right now, or go into Worth It and import it. And overall, what you will actually find is that Ghost Iron Ore can be quite heavily farmed, and you can get a lot of Ghost Iron Ore. Now the, th now the price does vary depending on server to server, depends on how many people have it in demand and want to buy loads of it and how low it is, so you could always reset the market if you really wanted to. But the things of note that it is used for is definitely for its mutations in order to turn those into trillium bars and then turning them into living steel for your panther mounts. You can use those for the jar's peculiar energy source when it comes towards engineering. It can also be used for a wide different variety of applications in order to craft some high value mounts such as like sky golem and all that stuff not just for transmog in general it's mainly prevalently used with like the panther mounts and also the sky golem as well as some of the subsidiaries which is like the battle pet of pierre now those ones sell for a lot of gold and the materials of Ghost Iron Ore sell relatively well in the grand scheme of things because they're always in demand to keep up with that production line in order to craft that Sky Golem or the next thing of Living Steel and all that jazz. So that is something you can do in the grand scheme of things. Now, aside from all of that, that is a really easy type of farm. So let's move on to our last and final farm, which is Spirits of Harmony. Now, overall, Spirits of Harmony sell relatively well in the grand scheme of things. You can farm them up pretty much anywhere in Pandaria. Just find yourself a spot. But is by making your way over to the Heart of Fear. The Heart of Fear farm is still very prevalent in order to actually farm up for Spirits of Harmony. But if you wanted to do an open world farm in order to just keep the rotation going and the farm going, I would still recommend farming up the Mogu, which are in the which are in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. I usually find that those ones give me the most ones and also you can get a Sky Shard when you're actually doing that farm and then build those up and then you can get yourself the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent mount as well, which then you can sell that on the auction house as, as well. So I, find, I usually add that into another farm as well. So then I can get gold from my Spirits of Harmony and I can also get a mount from that farm as well. Now, quite prevalently, this actual particular one is used quite heavily in alchemy in order to do your transmutes for riddle steel, which will give you living steel, but that requires three Spirits of Harmony and three trillion bars. Now, this actually works really damn well and it has no cooldown. That's why people will tend to gravitate towards that instead of doing the daily cooldown for living steel they'll tend to just do the one that is not capped and then just doing riddle steel. And quite typically, it usually goes for around about the same price. That's why people will just do it anyway and not worry about the cooldown. So 
that is something that you can take into consideration before you actually do this farm. That Spirits of Harmony do sell relatively well and they're used in a wide variety of different professions but most heavily in alchemy. Now, aside from all of that guys, that is pretty much everything for today for five mats that are always in demand. And obviously the bonus one is obviously every single Shadowlands farm. So uh, go look at the dashboard in Worth It, it will tell you on your server specifically whether which ones for Shadowlands are doing relatively well. Aside from all of that guys, I hope this helped you guys in the grand scheme of things. I know a lot of you guys were trying to ask me a load of the questions about which other farms could I actually do besides Shadowlands and will I actually be able to sell them in a relatively fast manner. So I thought I'd add this into a video for our 30 days of fundraising for the PDSA fundraiser. So if you want to support the fundraiser, please go to the link in the description down below. It is the top link. So, and then there you can actually donate towards the cause for the PDSA. Now, aside from all of that guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources, and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.